to 11. She's a little fella. Proudly sponsored by Steel. <laughs> yeah, proudly not sponsored by anyone. <laughs> Servo gave us a three cent per litre discount. Oh, hint, hint. Yeah. <laughs> Comes in handy sometimes. Yeah, all, uh, servos out there in the world. Oh, yeah, Over here, they're the two templates. So that's the top face, okay. this top one face. here. Yep. And then the other one is the side view yep. of the deadwood we have well, to the make. Final, yep. Hence why you need three yep. stacked up. Ewan came to help with the planking and what we call, what we're calling the dead wood. I mean, this section of wood is essentially part of the keel. It's notched, it notches into the lead or the lead notches into it. Um, and it's sort of what you sit on when you're aground or when you're hauled out of the water. We wanted it quite strong and stable wood. Um, we used Jarrah, which was reclaimed, more salvaged from a shed somewhere we found. Um, the previous owner passed away and he wanted to build a boat out of those bits of timber. They were for a keel which became perfect for us because they were wide enough and had, they had been sitting around for many years um, coated in tar and they were very stable and happy. Um, there were no checks, it was all clean. Um, so what I've done is I've marked lengths on here, I've marked lengths. This bit's going to be a fashion piece for the transom so this is just a it actually works out perfectly. We'll use this whole plank. Nice. Which is a lot of wood. It's but a monster piece of wood. Yeah. Um, <laughs> such is life. <laughs> yeah, so this, so basically this length up here, between those two is roughly, is sort of the length we want. There'll be a bit of left over. And you can see the taper we have to cut in. Whether we cut that in now, or get them through the thicknesser in these long bits. It's just tricky if you want to make it square. You know, there's a lot of things that go around. Because mm. if you cut your taper now, oh, the taper yeah, now it has to be square. Shine. Yeah, it's cutting like butter. Easy. Hope then we I'm... can stack them all up and take a couple around there. And yeah. Well, we only need three. So it's just these one three, one. and the last one stays, oh, here. One stays here. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. That's the gas, isn't it? Yeah, it has a choke. Oh, yeah, it needs a choke, doesn't it? And then just turn it off. <laughs> Maybe choke, choke down. He doesn't usually pump the accelerator. Okay. Yeah, good. Yeah, down a bit. Yeah. Down a bit. Yeah, yeah, try that. Yeah, that's good. That'll probably do, and you can lift up. You'll be able to slide it on the tangs pretty easily.
Oh, you have! Mate, what have you done? You're on the middle of the road. You're on a high traffic area. You got this? Oh, there we go. Quick, quick. Come, I come. Yeah, yeah. I can't do anything. It's all you. Oh. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. It. We'll delete that. Probably not. Now yeah, you just gotta not ruin uh, Anastasia's mask. Oh, hang on. You might have to go above her mask the whole way. Give it to her. There you go. Oh, oh. Don't go too high, Ewan, because you might hit the dinghy. Yeah. Now threading the needle. You good? So the wood we used for the dead wood is jarra, um, sourced from Western Australia. Uh, it would have been cut maybe, I don't know, 20 years ago at least. For the size of plank it was a rather large tree and we try not to support uh, logging of large trees. We go for the backyard timber philosophy, stuff that's already been cut many years ago that sat around in someone's shed. Um, the jarra is very dense very stable and really heavy. We may do a float test at some point to see if it actually floats. We're not even sure if it would float if you put it in a pond, but for us it served a perfect purpose for the uh, keel there. So you two will have to do it. The biggest thing is you get that hump when you go through the thickness. Yeah. You just kind of got to keep it on the bench and try and make sure it's feed flat. Feed it through flat yeah. and then feed the whole the weight from the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and obviously once it comes out, it can sit on that bed until mm. you're both there yeah. or whatever. And then, yeah, I think just give it a go, see what you can do, I reckon. Very good.
Not very light, is it? What do we reckon? Oh, <laughs> okay. Bit of a hump there. I think winding stick it. So we've used a method that we have labelled winding sticks. Now, around the world there's many different ways, probably, of, to call this thing or idea or way of seeing something. The winding sticks basically will show you the twist in a piece of wood. Um, we've used them a few times there, Ewan was using them. You just lay sticks out at, you know, every 100, 150 and you can eyeball down the sticks and see how much they're twisting and wandering. So that's sort of the idea there. So the winding sticks help you see the twist in a plank. Um, and as you go, you can knock the twists out in each bit until all the winding sticks are level on the top, on both sides. It's a very simple way of getting twists out of big bits of wood. Um, obviously when you buy big bits of wood or you have big bits of wood milled, they're not perfect and not straight. There's always a little something going on and because we're gluing we wanted perfect gluing surfaces and to make them flat and true so we use the winding sticks to get all those twists out with the electric plane before we put it through the thicknesser we'd sort of get most of the wind, winds out and then we could pass it through the thicknesser once on the other face and then flip it and clean that face again and go back and try again to double check how you're going with it um it's you know different ways of doing it but that worked well for us and we managed to get all those bits of wood nice and clean and straight and true for gluing. I'm just not sitting flat. I don't know if that sticks. Yeah, this, yeah, this sticks actually bowed. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not sitting flat on there very well. No. Now it's not straight. <laughs> Ooh, we'll just need to work side. Yeah, I think you just got to take that hump out. And then the rest looks kind of okay. This one's just not sitting because there's a bit of a hump, but your thickness it might take that out. Yeah, I reckon just work a bit on this end. Um, but, yeah, whether we get that wind out of it though. The wind's a fair way from here up to that mm. end. Oh, not that bad now. It's just this corner. Yeah, it looks pretty flat. It just sort of dives off. Yeah. And then... The man looks just as if the whole wave is so it's higher. Well, I we think just because it's on the... Oh, yeah, that's better. That's better. Um, looks to me like this corner, just a little bit on that corner, maybe that corner. Same as before, yeah. Not much. We're almost there. It's actually looking pretty damn straight. The big way to tell would to be put it on top of that other plank. Yeah. Yeah, I think more that corner than this one. Mm. If you look, like this off pretty good. Just that bit. Yeah, I just. Yeah. Well, let's bring it now. I don't know if it goes that far back. Let's just bring these winding sticks a little closer together. We might be able to tell a bit more. Yeah, something like that. I really think it's only sort of here, from here back. Okay. How's our seam here, guys? Pretty good? Tally ho tight. Tally ho tight? Tally ho tight. <laughs> Is that a new saying that's going to go viral? Yeah, trademark. You, you so what do, you, what do you mean by that? You're referring to the channel Tally Ho, obviously. 
Absolutely. And they're tight joinery. Yeah, tight joinery. So basically anything that's good, which is not much of what we do, is uh, tally-ho tight. Tally-ho tight. Good luck getting that paper in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you won't get, you don't think you'd fit a sheet of A4 in there? It's no, too tight. No, you get a tally-ho paper in there. Oh, tally-ho! Tally -ho. <laughs> the paper! The paper, that's what I mean. I thought you were referring to the YouTube channel. I don't know who that is. That's actually very apt because that, th that works both ways. Ah, interesting. Maybe they stole the idea from the tally-ho paper. Maybe. Like oh well, I reckon oh. tally-ho papers have been around for a while. Tally-ho papers have been around for a while. Yeah. So we go by tally-ho tight. <laughs> Can a piece of paper fit in that? A tally-ho paper. Smack on mate. Beautiful. Nice work team. Tally-ho tight. I was like, what channel are you talking about? <laughs> The tally-ho tight philosophy was a good join with a good bond with good glue so you have clean surfaces, even glue joins and a nice flat surface for gluing basically. We wanted our that lamination to be as perfect as possible. In other cases as often you can feel it, you know, you have a bit of room for error and you can fill it a bit more with glue but because we have such compression on the boat when it sits on the hard um, just wanted to be sure that that was, you know, a good join between those three bits of wood that were laminated together. Theoretically, this end should match this end within plus minus. So, hopefully, the sides are. So, how close are your sides now? You've got to go that way a bit. Yeah. To make it a bit. But you know that. Now I'm getting too small, so we've got to come. View a bit. Yeah, that'll do. Let's split the difference here. So, remember, we've given it heaps on the side. Yeah. I think that's probably okay. How's our tally ho tent one? So we've got that rock in this one. Yeah. It's just and, this corner. Yeah. I think we can do that by hand. I mean, we've, <coughs> actually, we've done everything by electric. And this here is actually just this lump. 
which we can also do by hand. I'm just playing that off now. Yeah. Um, I can get you a long And then the other one was the grain orientation, but. Oh, that's the grain orientation. That one? Yeah. That's why I looked. What was he doing? Oh, this guy. Unfortunately, the actual gluing of the deadwood um, we didn't film. I think the camera was out of battery or something anyway. That's just with epoxy and thickened epoxy. So we wet each surface and then you thicken epoxy through it. We debated on what type of glue because they're such big bits of wood and will they move and all this sort of stuff. Do we need more flexible glue? But we went with epoxy because it will inevitably be coated in epoxy and probably glass so it'll be stable as it is so once we seal it it's done that's how it is not too bad you know yeah it's pretty good other side first yeah try and square that up what's on this side yeah just and then see look at it from the side like yeah, the top. The side. sorry yeah look at it from the top make sure <coughs> I've got enough to take out of both sides yeah. so you're gonna be able to lift that by yourself <laughs> big bit of wood there. You can walk through Pav, it's alright. You don't have to hide. <laughs> oh, you don't want to be on the camera? It's following me though. <laughs> she's, it means she's wanted by police. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys are on the seesaw. We are on the seesaw. It's about to go into place. Big kill Timber. A few days in this. A few days in this, big <laughs> nugget. We'll, um, we'll go in that way and then, yeah, and then move those bits there. <clears throat> She gonna fit. Nice. Oh, <laughs> oh it's so sweet. That is dreamy. 
as delectable. Ah, nice. We've got it under the boat now, which is great. Uh, until my shoulder's better, it's probably going to sit there and we will drill holes for the bolts and bolt it in. But for now, it'll just sit there and we wait. We need to bolt that dead wood on before the engine can go in. So that's sort of why we're jumping on that now. We'd love to get that bolted on so then we can put the engine in and then we can start thinking about the quarter burst and the aft section of the boat. Um, and now in the meantime, Ifka has moved on to the deck again, painting and actually fastening the deck on. So that'll be, I think next episode, you'll see some of that. Uh, it's fantastic to get half the deck on and get it tidied up, it looks beautiful. It's clean down there, it's rather dark, so we're thinking about wiring and what we're going to do there to get some lights going through the boat now. But the main thing is it's everything that falls, you know, down doesn't fall down because it hits the deck. It's awesome. So guys, thanks for watching. Um, we'd like to thank our patrons in person. Um, they're fantastic. Not a lot of them, but everyone counts <laughs> and we love them all. Um, it really helps. We are slowly saving our pennies from a patron to maybe buy something of interest for the boat. So if any of the patrons come up and have an idea of what we should put the money towards and let us know. I mean, most people will probably say more camera gear, but uh, for now we're pretty, pretty happy doing what we're doing. Um, we'd rather put the money towards the boat. But we do find it important to keep our videos of a decent standard, so if you think there is something that we need to do, then let us know. Uh, but yeah, thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon. Big long pauses. Look at the lens. <laughs>